Good morning, friends, and welcome to Friday, May 27th. Pastor Knopfsinger will start as our hymn of reflection with Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Friday's devotion is found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Tom Arthur. And our scripture reading is Acts 1, 1 through 11. Here, Luke continues. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote all about that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day that he was taken up into heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they came, had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and the cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go up into heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's stay with the story of the ascension one more day. Why? Because Luke does. He ends the gospel of Luke with the story of the ascension and then he tells the story again at the beginning of Acts. Why does he tell and then retell this moment in the life of Jesus and his followers? I think, the author thinks, that Luke decides to tell the story of the ascension twice because he's absolutely a criti crucial moment, a leadership transition moment. Here we find the passing of the church plant off to the second pastor. The author knows something of moments like this because he is a second pastor. He followed the founding pastor of Sycamore Creek in Michigan. And the church went from having a grandma as their pastor to having a 33-year-old who didn't even have any kids as their pastor. That's a whiplash moment for any church, even a strong one. These moments are important because being off by even a small amount can lead to really challenging events over time. If a rocket heading to the moon is off course by a one degree, then it will miss by over 4,000 miles. Transitions and new beginnings are that important. There are at least two things that are essential to get right at this moment in Luke's story. The mission and the power of the church. First, the followers of Jesus have to decide whether they will focus on themselves and restore the kingdom of Israel or 
whether they will become a community focused outward to the world around them. And second, they must be empowered to accomplish their mission by the Holy Spirit. During moments of transition, be sure to get those two things right. Otherwise, you might be off by more than 4,000 miles. Let us pray. Where do you have a transition this week that could result in your focusing on yourself? Ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to stay focused outward. Amen. Our closing hymn is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, verse 4. Blessings.